Hey friends, welcome back to Homestead on a Prayer. As you can see, we're out here today in my not so beautiful garden. We've had two frosts now, and so I thought it might be a good time to have a little bit of a different kind of garden tour. We'll go around the garden, we'll see what it looks like now. And despite what you might see in this picture right here, there is actually a lot that is still alive and growing in this garden. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk through the garden, we're gonna take a look at the plants. I'm going to show you what plants actually do survive a frost. Now you'll see behind me, my tomatoes over here, those are gone, those did not survive. So a lot of my summer plants are gone. So we're just gonna kinda walk through this frost kissed garden and I will show you what I still have growing and what is gone. So we'll just start right here. This is the bed that you saw behind me a minute ago. And you can see, this is where my tomatoes were. You can see there are a few little tomatoes left on the vines. These were tomatoes that were either not in great condition, I just missed harvesting for some reason. A lot of them were too small that I didn't think they would really ripen in the house. And honestly, I wasn't sure we were gonna get a frost. So some of those really small ones, I wanted to leave on here just in case. But as you can see, my tomatoes are unsalvageable at this point, they are gone. Tomatoes do not survive a frost. Down here, this is in the front of my tomato bed. These were some kind of companion plants that I had for my tomatoes. In case you can't tell what these little shriveled plants are, these used to be bush beans. So beans are very frost tender. Beans do not survive a frost at all either. And here, this is basil. Basil really does not like frost. Basil doesn't even like it when it starts to get cold. So none of these made it through. Now, if we go around the corner here, you'll see a couple plants that did survive. This is calendula here. Now it's not flowering right now, so it's not all that recognizable. We've got a little calendula plant here too. Calendula is actually pretty frost hardy. So you'll see as we go around the garden, I have some other calendula that is actually still blooming and this will do pretty well until it gets really cold. Now there are oh so many reasons to plant calendula in your garden. It is just an amazing plant. But in case you needed just one more reason, it adds some really nice color to the fall garden after the first frost. Now over here, you can see my cherry tomato bed. Same fate over here, lots of shriveled up tomatoes. There's a few green tomatoes I didn't get out here to harvest. As I said, the night that it frosted, I actually wasn't sure that it was going to frost. Down here, there's some more beans that are shriveled up. So we're not gonna get anything from those. Now it is actually just about time to plant garlic in my area. So what I'm going to be doing is that cherry tomato bed that I just showed you guys, we're going to be ripping all of those dead plants out and I'm going to be replanting that bed with garlic. I will be, I'll make a video of that and I'll probably do that really soon. So I'll take you guys along and we'll plant garlic together. So that is something to look forward to. That is one thing that does get planted in the garden once it's already cold and fall. Now again, more tomatoes. You can see I didn't harvest all of these. I harvested all the ones that were decent sized, but a lot of these little ones, they weren't really mature. I left a few of them on the plants just in case we didn't get a frost because I wanted to try to get them to grow to their full potential. That was a risk that in this case did not pay off. Now over here, this bed is still looking pretty good. You can see I have some fall lettuce here. Behind there, I have some parsley. Parsley and lettuce actually both do pretty well down to pretty cold temperatures. So they can both survive a pretty significant frost. Lettuce, there's a lot of variation because there's so many different types of lettuce. But if you're growing cold hardy lettuce, you may actually be able to grow that well into the winter. Now over here, you can see peppers on the back of my tomato bed. These did not make it either. Peppers are a very heat loving crop. They do not like cold. You can see I do have a kale plant here, which this actually, I wanna say this actually overwintered from last year. So I've got this kale here. I know I didn't plant this this year. And this has survived. Kale is a great plant to plant when frost is coming. Now this bed here is going to be my most beautiful bed this time of year. You can see I have all that lettuce through here. So we've got all kinds of lettuce in here. I've got a mix of different kinds. I've got some reds and greens, some romaines. I've got some butter crunch type lettuce. There's also some little cabbages there. Um, I'm not really sure if those are gonna do much at this point, but we've got them there. Got some kale in the back. 
Over here, I have a few carrots. I planted a bunch of carrot seeds and most of them did not germinate for some reason, but I have a few that did. So we'll let these go and see how they do. Now this lettuce here is all specifically cold winter lettuces. So these are meant to withstand cold. I'm planning to cover these. As you can see, I have these hoop supports here on the end of the beds. And we're gonna be covering this with plastic when it gets really cold. So covering this lettuce bed with plastic, since I've chosen some cold hardy lettuce varieties, that will allow us to continue harvesting lettuce really late into the season. Along with my lettuce, I've got a few different types of kale mixed in. So this is red Russian kale here. I've got, this is lacinato kale, dazzling blue. This one's not as cold hardy as the other, so this probably will not make it through the winter, but it will make it into the winter. And then over here, I've got some, oh, I'm drawing a blank. What kind of kale? This is blue curled scotch kale. That's what this is. That's very cold hardy as well. This is actually broccoli. So we planted broccoli in this bed. You can see I've got a couple. This, uh, no, those are cabbages. Those are new plants. But I've got a couple broccoli plants in this bed. So I actually I harvested all the broccoli from this bed quite a while ago. And then I cut the plants out. I left the roots in place though, because I wanted the roots to kind of compost and break down and enrich my soil with that nice organic matter. But what happened, instead of breaking down, some of the broccoli plants, the roots decided to regrow. So we have a couple little stragglers. I figured I will just leave them and we'll see what happens with that. If nothing else, broccoli leaves are actually edible. So we could kind of add those into a soup the way we would add kale in or just kind of stir fry them up or whatever. I figured I'm gonna let it grow and we'll see what happens. Now kind of, I have a tomato in this bed that died too. But if we kind of move it to the side, you can see that I have some nice Asian greens under here. A few of them over here too. The leaves have kind of fallen and hidden some of my plants. But these are very cold hardy. Here's another one of those broccoli plants I was talking about. Now these are tiny, so I'm not sure if they'll have a chance to do much before it really gets cold. But what I'm hoping will happen is they'll overwinter and then give me some really early growth in the spring. So Asian greens are really cold hardy. And oh, there's a tomato I missed. And these should do really well for me into the winter and maybe even throughout the winter. Just want to give you guys another shot of all this lettuce. It's definitely the time of year when any growing green or red in this case thing is just beautiful and welcoming. There's a little volunteer ground cherry. This did not make it through the frost. And something's been munching on this broccoli, but this is another one of those broccoli plants I mentioned. Now alyssum is another pretty little flower that makes it through the frost. So it's worth growing because it does well in the early spring and it does well in the fall after most other things have died. Just adds a little bit of cheer to the fall garden. And kind of, as you can see behind it, basically those peppers did not appreciate the frost. So we've got lots of peppers up there that did not make it through. Now this bed over here has not been all that successful for me. This was actually supposed to be another fall and winter bed, but a lot of the things I planted here didn't germinate. You can see I do have a pretty nice scallion patch here. This is, I think is gonna be maybe the fourth winter for the scallion patch. These overwinter really well in my area. And there's some calendula, which haven't really flowered much, but they're still thriving and looking nice and green. Now over here in that same bed, you can see I've got some really nice looking Asian greens. I'm hoping that these will continue to grow for a little bit longer, get nice and big, and we can harvest these. Now in here I have chickweed. This is actually a wild plant. Most people would consider a weed, but I actually really like chickweed. Chickweed is actually really delicious and really good for you. And at least in my area, it grows wild, kind of grows out of control and crazy. So if I can get a free harvest that nature is going to grow for me without any work on my own, I kind of just let it go. And chickweed is one of those plants that's very cold tolerant so it's great for providing a late winter harvest it's also great for providing an early spring harvest basically the times when there won't be much flourishing in your garden you might be able to find some chickweed so i definitely like it it's got kind of a spinachy flavor probably a little milder than spinach i think it's really good so these seedlings here or at least some of them they're really tiny and i think that these are mosh seedlings i did have some of these are mosh. Some of them are chickweed or other random plants. But throughout here, there's some mosh seedlings. Mosh is extremely cold hardy and will actually continue growing throughout the winter. 
there's another one that looks like mosh to me. I did have some mosh plants that I overwintered from last year. They went to seed and I kind of scattered the seed in a variety of places. And I made sure to pay special attention to this bed when I did that because I knew this was going to be one of my fall and winter beds. So basically the only real challenge with growing mosh in the winter is that you want to keep the snow off of it. It doesn't care about cold. It's completely unfazed by any, pretty much any level of cold, at least that we get here in Connecticut. So I put some of it in these beds here that I have these hoops in and just to keep the snow and the weather off of it and it'll grow all winter and we may not be able to harvest any this winter but it will give us a really early spring harvest which is just as important. So here's some calendula still blooming, still beautiful and back over there on the other side of the fence. I'm not sure if you can see it but we'll take a closer look in a minute. Got some more calendula blooming. So it is worth growing just to have this little cheerful beauty greet you on a day when the rest of your garden is looking kind of gray and sad. Now over here, I just had a couple little pea seeds that I planted here just to kind of use them up. You can see the peas survived the frost, but the tips got damaged. So peas can handle a light frost, but the flowers especially don't like a really serious frost, which is interesting. I actually thought our frost wasn't that serious. Over here, I have another variety of snap peas, and I'm guessing that maybe that other variety that I have is just not quite as tough because these look completely fine. Going down the fence here. So I don't have very many peas growing right now. I didn't have all that many seeds left, but I just kind of threw a couple in the ground just to see what we get. So I've got a few and hopefully we'll get enough to just add a little bit of flavor and crunch to a salad or something like that. Here's that other calendula flower looking beautiful and cheerful and completely unfazed. You can see down in here there's even some buds so we should be getting even more flowers than this and there's another one. There's a few so this will keep going for a little while. Now a lot of culinary herbs tend to do really well with frost as well. I know you saw my basil which did not but I've got sage here and then over here, kind of creeping along the ground, I've got thyme. And both of those are completely happy and flourishing. They don't mind the cold at all. You can see through here, my peppermint is still looking great. I know it should come as no surprise. Mint can survive pretty much anything. So that's still looking really good. So here's my oregano. You can see kind of down in here, there's a lot of really good oregano left. Over here, my chives are looking a little bit bedraggled but these will be pretty much the first plant to pop up in the spring. So it is really considerate of these culinary herbs to stick around past the first frost because we're coming to the time of year when we're going to be eating a lot of soup and warming food. It's time to, in, in America, it's time to, well, pretty soon anyway, it'll be time to start thinking about Thanksgiving and thyme and sage and oregano and herbs like that are herbs that are great for soups and like a lot of those warming, comforting winter meals. So I really appreciate that I can still go out to my garden and get those. Honestly, even until it gets really cold in the winter, I've come out to my garden and I have brushed away snow and I've harvested thyme from the snow. So it's a, a lot of those herbs are very tough plants, very easy to grow. I highly recommend them. They give you something to harvest from your garden pretty much all year long. Now this is really the last bed I wanna show you guys. I've got kale in here. Now this isn't new kale. This is the kale I planted in the spring as opposed to the baby kale that I have over there with the lettuces. Now you can see it's kind of, it's taken a lot of abuse this summer. We had a pretty serious cabbage worm issue earlier. You can see a lot of these leaves are nibbled down. Now frost is actually a pretty good friend to kale in a couple ways. One is that it kind of takes away a little bit of that kind of sharper, more bitter bite that kale tends to have in the heat of summer. It makes it sweeter and more tender. It's just a more delicious plant. It also tends to kill a lot of the pests that play kale. I mentioned you saw my kale has a lot of holes from being nibbled by cabbage worms. Now that it's getting really cold, the cabbage worms will be gone. And this kale, as you could see, the middle of that kale plant is really regrowing really well and strongly. So even though I planted this kale in the spring, this isn't necessarily my fall kale, it's still going strong. So I'm still going to let it be. And we should be able to harvest. We should be able to harvest from that for all the fall and into the winter anyway. You can see over here, I've got some red Russian kale. This is what it looks like when it's fully mature. If you try to ignore the holes from the cabbage worms, this kale is gonna make a pretty good comeback now that the cabbage worms have hopefully been killed off. And here you can see all the outer leaves are nibbled, but in the middle, it's got some really nice new growth. Over here, I've got some, this is dazzling blue. 
dinosaur kale or lacinato kale. Same thing, the outer leaves are nibbled on, but it's got a lot of really nice new leaves in here. This most likely won't survive the winter. It's not quite as tough as the other kale varieties, but we should have the Russian red survive the winter and definitely the blue curled scotch. So thank you guys so much for hanging out in my garden with me today. I know it's kind of a, a shorter, a little, probably a little bit less exciting of a garden tour, but there is still so much potential here for fall and winter harvests. Even after the first frost, there's really so much that you can harvest. And I'm really glad that we took the time to prepare this lettuce bed and to get started with a fall garden. So I hope that you enjoyed walking around my garden with me. I hope that you're having a great day and I hope to see you again soon. Bye guys, I'll see you next time.